So nobody freak out. But I'm going to read the reading in a little bit. So I'm going to talk for a little bit, then do the reading, and then keep going. I haven't forgotten the reading. I know you're all thinking, you know, I just completely forgot to do it. I haven't forgotten it. I might forget to do it later, but so far, I haven't forgotten to do it. This is all according to plan. Well, let's begin with a prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. There's a famous curse. May you get what you wish for. The reason it's most often called a curse is because what we wish for is rarely what we actually need. And then we, when we get it, we wonder why we wanted it in the first place. Has anyone here ever prayed for patience? <laughs> I was told very early on that it's the one prayer you never pray for. Because then God will give it to you by making you, forcing you to be patient. Every night before I fall asleep, I have a routine. A group of prayers that comes out even when I try to not pray them. It's like my, the moment my head hits the pillow, it's autopilot prayers. And these prayers come out. And every night, without fail, I pray that God would make me a better person. And then I'll watch the next day as I find some difficulty in some area that I'm not very good at, and I think, why God? Oh, that's right, I asked for that. Sorry. Can we stop those prayers? Pray for something. Else. But what we have today is one of my favorite Bible passages because it's fundamentally odd. And it is secretly about the curse. May you get what you wish for. Here is your gospel for this day. Then they arrive at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out, as Jesus stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he wore no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High? God, I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of him. For many times it had seized him, he was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demons into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding. And the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine. And the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the shepherds saw what had happened, they ran off, or swineherds rather, saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened, and when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom <coughs> the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man for whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. This is our good news for this day. How many of you, in stories, movies, books, everyday life, how many of you have heard about a pleasant demon? A cordial demon? 
A polite demon. Isn't that an oxymoron? <laughs> Two words that shouldn't go together. A polite demon. But the demon featured in our gospel is downright courteous. What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High? I beg you, do not torment me. He pleads. He greets him properly. He uses his full title. He doesn't even, you know, shortchange him on that. He, he begs. He doesn't demand. This is the nicest demon that has ever existed anywhere. And thus begins the happy children's tale. Legion, the friendly demon, the story of the washed up. <laughs> now don't get me wrong. The story is set up in the most ominous way. We forget about it because we break up our stories like that, but just before it's the story of Jesus calming the storm. The disciples have just been in the midst of this massive turning where they all assume that they're about to die. going across this lake, the uh, Lake of Gennesaret. And we hear lake, and being people of the sound in the ocean, we think, get over it. You're on a lake. Call me when you're on the ocean and the seas are 18 feet high. But the Lake of Gennesaret is 8 miles wide and 13 miles long. It's a big lake. And when the winds came across there, the waves get big and a storm can be deadly. It's meant to fill you with fear. You know, coming in and they reach dry ground. As the disciples are kissing the ground, thanking God that they have survived this, they see a man approach them. He has a wild look in his eyes. No clothes, broken chains all over him. And they begin to scream when he says, Greeting, good sir. Are we having a pleasant day? <laughs> it's not how this story should go. The raving demon should not invite Jesus over for tea. But that's the story we have. A story that in part reminds us that when the temptations of life come, they don't come with a giant sign that flashes, this is a temptation. Look out. But the story continues in its oddness with the demon not being banished even though Jesus commands it. Hear the verse. What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. Jesus commanded the demon to come out. It did not. And that begins our negotiation. We have movies, classic art, books where God plays chess with the devil, symbolizing the battle of good and evil. But we don't actually think that Satan and God sit down and play chess. But here we have God and demons sitting down at a negotiating table. You have Jesus' lawyer at his side, Satan representing himself, of course. And they're negotiating. We expect war. We expect battles. We expect trickery. And I think there is some trickery here. We think the demon gets what it wants. Gets its wish granted. Our gospel tells us they begged him not to order them to go into the abyss. Now there on the hillside a large herd of swine was feeding. And the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Finally, the Bible story we've been waiting for, where the demons win. And we start to think that maybe Jesus got fooled. Approached by the kind-hearted demon, and Jesus gets swindled into letting the demons get their way. It's kind of like, why do you want to go in those demons? Why do you want to go in those pigs? I always think about garage sales because it's garage sale season. And it's like how you, you put a price, you there's something you put on your table, but you don't even put a price tag because you think it's so worthless that you don't think anybody will buy it anyways. And then suddenly somebody's really excited and interested, and you grab it and pull it away. And why do you want my ceramic plant collection? 
what do you get that I don't understand? That's the feel of the story. We feel like Jesus falls for it. They get what they want. They get to go into these pigs. But the story ends not with the demons winning, but with the curse. May you get what you wish for. And the demons came out of the man and entered the swan, and the herd rushed down the steep banks into the lake and was drowned. We get caught up in that story because we think that's what demons are about. Destruction. They, they will destroy. So they got their way because they made the swine herds unhappy and everyone's confused. But what was the one thing the demons didn't want? They didn't want to go back to the abyss. And with the pigs dead, where are they headed now? Back to the abyss. May you get what you wish for. For whatever reason, many times, most times, God allows us to decide what is best for us. Allows us to see our wishes come true. When all of the while, the one with the real knowledge, real power, real authority is sitting there silently. As we tell that one with all the knowledge and authority and power what is best for us. But our gospel story doesn't end with washed up bacon. It ends with the man that was, until recently, overwhelmed by legion. Then people came out to see what had happened, and when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed in his right mind. And they were afraid. You wonder, why are they afraid? Because they've tried everything. They've done all the things that they thought it would take to make things right. They had flexed their knowledge. Maybe if we take off his clothes, it'll scare him into his right mind. It would work for me. Maybe if we chain him up, he will work all that anger and frustration out of his system. We know what is right. We know what it will take. And then they see true knowledge, true peace, true freedom, and where it comes from. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus. We can try. And we do try to make all our wishes, all our wants come true. But then what? There's always a next. And there's always the bigger question, and for what? We have the God of all standing before us, living within us, calling out to us. And in those times we say, follow me, God. I know where you want me to go. You ever see that bumper sticker? If God is your co-pilot, you're sitting in the wrong seat. <laughs> Not big on bumper stickers. <laughs> What happens when we sit down at the feet of Jesus and ask, where do you want me to go? What are your wishes for me? Thank you for setting me free. Now what? We can so easily turn the curse, may all your wishes come true, into a blessing by changing a few words. May all God's wishes for you come. And suddenly we and the world are transformed by simply sitting at the feet of Jesus. May all God's wishes for you be true. Amen.